how do you feel about India vis-a-vis -vis China, because the world looks at it in, in this way. China had a head start for several decades. They amassed a huge amount of wealth uh, and uh, brought in by, hook or by, by legitimate means and sometimes not so legitimate means a lot of technology and made the world kind of uh, depend on the manufacturing base that they have vertically integrated and now using its clout, its money to buy off a lot of sources, a lot of poor countries, suppliers and trade routes and also militarily, geopolitically. So it's kind of, it would seem that it has a strategy and it's got its act together and it's a pretty ominous force, at least it looks like that. So how does, how is India dealing with all that? Mm. That huge China which wasn't this kind of a China 20 years ago. Mm. Well, I mean, China is our neighbor. Yes. And China has been uh, our uh, partner, if you like, for centuries. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm um, being immodest enough to say that some of my Chinese friends have told me quietly that if there is, they have never, they've always given to the rest of the world in terms of inventions, etc., etc. And they're very proud of that. But the only country they've ever accepted anything from is India. Of course. And yeah. so, they, so therefore, ours is a, ours is a very different kind of a relationship, which is, which one, it goes back centuries, and two, we are, we are tied, you know, on the northern borders, I mean, you know, there we are. So, and the third thing that I must say is that, you know, uh, personally, I'm very impressed with China, you know, yes. for having lifted 600 million people yes. out of dire poverty. Yes. It's something that you can't Unprecedented deny. Unprecedented in history. You can't, unprecedented in the time span that they've got to achieve 10% rate of growth. Yes. on real terms for three decades right it's incredible so right. you know and I, I, I very often said that we need to learn from them mm. as to how they get their act together as you said yes I mean, you know but you know but I think comparisons are not called for because we are two completely different things mm. you know one for example this is a 98 percent hand population right I mean ours diversity 1200 languages if you like and you know about 12,000 dialects you know you uh, the, what somebody said that you walk you go 25 kilometers and the food and language and the dialect changes yes, in that yes. you know, So our diversity is continental. You know, so what that means is that to get a central government to get a policy going in this country requires it to be translated into 24 different languages if you like. Now that's the cost. So that's the one thing. So we need, so we, clearly we would add, then we are, you know, we will need far more effort to achieve the same economic, you know, success as Chinese do. But the more important thing, Rajiv, let me say is that our forefathers, for very good reason, decided that we will undertake our three transitions together, the social, political and economic. You know, because we just couldn't do them sequentially as the rest of the world has done. Now, this is a very important point you're making. You see, the three transitions have to be in parallel and interlinked. Interlinked and and and, 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 and in, you know at the same time synonymous. Now, you think of North America. How did North America develop its economic might and you know capitalism? With slavery. Well, and before in, in, that, doing away with the native Indians. Yes, yes, yes. And think of that. So it's on the back of other people. And all very sequenced. Yes. I mean, you know, the, the British, I think, gave their women the right to vote in 1923. Yes. And, you know, how many years after the Industrial Revolution? Right. So, you know, so, so that's the, but we, from the word go, 1947, 1950, our constitution, highest form of democracy, parliamentary democracy, liberal democracy. We got our, uh, you know, reservation, we got our, you know, sort of policy for positive discrimination in place. We got uh, our economic transition going. No other country in the world has attempted this, which is what we have attempted. On such a big scale. You can see. Now, so that means, of course, that, the, that we have had to pay the cost of these transitions up front. Yes. You know, and therefore, our transition has been, economic transition right. has been slower. But look at what we have achieved. Mm. A complete inversion of the social pyramid. Yes. You know, with a Dalit lady being the chief minister of the largest state in this country on four occasions. Right. Completing a full year term. Right. You know, Tamil Nadu where, you know, we, we don't know, you know, you know, where the upper castes are, except right. the, probably predominantly in the Silicon Valley. Right. So all that without any violence, but, right. you know, really, uh, no loss. Similarly for political transition, you know, we've achieved our, our uh, institutions are as strong and resilient as ever 
despite what Winston Churchill said, you know, that they, after five, give them five years and they'll come back with a begging bowl for them to govern us. He thought <laughs> we were just completely ungovernable. <laughs> so, you know, so this China, and this is where I want, has not completed its transition, has not completed, has done remarkably well in economic transition, has become an upper middle income country. But its political transition and its social transition, I think, is yet to happen. Now, there is the, is the, is the, is the rub that if we and I, we must in the next three decades, complete our economic transition, India would be the exemplar for the rest of emerging economy. Because that's what all the economies, societies are wanting. We will be the exemplar, for example, for having a real pluralistic society, which even Europe and America are struggling to achieve. This is brilliant, you know, because I haven't, I haven't heard it expressed in this way. It's actually a very important point you're making, that it's a more comprehensive ecosystem being evolved yes. rather than one thing at a time. And a societal system. Yes. I mean, the whole, I mean, think of it, you know, we are handling our, you know, uh, our pluralism in a manner that no other country you know, has been able to do. You know, you know, different communities are able to, you know, stay here. And you know that the latest is that even our, uh, the RSS, Sar Sang Chah Chalak, has now in some, has had the courage to revise the entire, you know, sort of thesis that his, you know, earlier predecessors had put forward. Why? Because he has recognized that we in India have to be, remain a multiple, a pluralistic society and take everybody forward together. As the Prime Minister has said, Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas. Mm, very good. You know, and, and once we do that, and we are on the verge, we are on the cusp of doing it. Mm. I don't think, uh, we, same thing with women empowerment. Yes. And with the environment. Yes. Now, look, we have taken all these additional mm. costs in our stride. Mm. We have not talked about, oh, we will do this now and then because we'll China go. said, uh, we'll first achieve this yes. and some people have to wait. And then yeah. some people have to wait and two, we'll retrofit. Yes. You yes. know, we will get, now we, we haven't done this. That's possible in a very centralized, top-down, dictatorial system that we're optimizing long-term, short-term. There are suboptimal solutions. You have to put up with it. Whereas we've said, let's try to move everybody together. And people who are as different from each other. Yes. As you can imagine. Yes, yes. You know, and, yes. And, and, you know, yes, I mean, yes. You know, but you know, but I think this is, I feel very proud sometimes. Yeah. So this, is quite a remark this is quite a remarkable thing. Now, uh, let's talk about the digital world. Do you feel India is running the risk of becoming a digital colony in the sense that Google controls a certain platform, Facebook controls a platform, uh, you know, then Microsoft has the operating platform. So all the major technological platform on which we are running are generally US controlled. And now Amazon and Flipkart has been bought by Walmart. So the whole digital economy, uh, where we know there's a huge future for us, we are the individual workers, but so it's like bricklayers laying bricks for somebody else's house. So at the end of laying bricks, I'm out of work, I have to find another client, but what I have built, I don't own any equity. I don't own a single brick that I've been working on. So we don't own the lines of code, we don't own the platforms, we are doing it for foreign shareholders. So uh, the tech uh, revolution supplying tech labor has helped bring a lot of talent to the country, educate our people and bring some cash flow and money, which is all good. But the equity and the, uh, the ownership of these platforms has been in the hands of foreign entities. While China uh, did not allow these foreign people for a while, for quite a long time. And so instead of Google and Facebook, they had their own Alibaba and their own very massive uh, organizations. So today they can say that they can take on the West in terms of digital platforms. So is there a, is there a digital colonization where we are dependent on foreigners? No, I, I, I don't think so. With all due respect, I don't think so. And I think um, even the days of people have used the term, you know, the sort of uh, negative term of being uh, digital coolies. Yes. I think is behind us. Cyber coolies, yes. Cyber coolies. I think is behind us. Because simply, if not for nothing, no other reason that, uh, you know, Mr. Trump has made it very difficult for us to be able to export our you know, cyber experts and so on. But, you know, uh, two or three things. One, 
we had no alternative but to be an open society, open economy, an open society. And as, as I said, because of our uh, diversity, because of our federal nature, uh, and, and our ability or lack of it to be able to control the way China does, even if, for example, we had banned some things or the other, they would have found backdoor entries into some states, some provinces, etc. And you wouldn't have, one, we wouldn't have been able to. But two, I think we are wedded for the, you know, we are the founding members of the WTO. We are the founding members of the World Bank. We are one of the sort of voting members of the multi liberal, multilateral liberal economic order. Now, China hasn't, China wasn't, China hasn't been, China is probably still not. But we have abided by our commitments to international treaties and obligations by remaining an open economy and open society. And the 1991 big time liberalization that happened was premised upon the fact that we will, uh, you know, we will, we will have an open economy uh, where FDI, the foreign direct investment and the foreign you know, capital flows would be permitted. Now, you've cited all these figures. Yes, absolutely right. And some of them have in some sense uh, taken over our fledgling you know, things, but think of it one way, Patum, you know, which is a, an amazing innovation. Yes. Now, the, the, it has a equity investment, I think, from a SoftBank, no, Alibaba, you know, or whatever percent. How does it matter? It is employing Indian people. Yes. It is serving Indian clients. No, it's a, that's an Indian it, platform. I agree. No, but, but it's got 40% or 50% equity now from Alibaba. Yeah. Similarly for Walmart or whoever, and if they've, Walmart has, uh, what is Walmart, Flipkart, if Flipkart. they've taken over. How does it matter? No, those are India-based platforms. But you see, the thing but, is, but, but, for instance, Gmail. Gmail is being monitored, read, surveilled somewhere else. And all our sensitive information, people are communicating. Yeah, but, but that's with. the second. I was going to come to that. So that's the first thing that, you know, my own, by the way, here, I, my, my belief, my sort of firm conviction is that at the moment, uh, as Deng Xiaoping said for China, we have to do whatever we can to, to achieve full employment for our youth in this country. Now, whether that means that we will become digital colonies or whatever, whatever, all those are, for me at least, second, second order conditions. Because if we don't fulfill the aspirations of our young people, and, and which is to get a good quality job, and each word is important, I think we would have failed and the rest of the objectives would become far more secondary. The cyber security part that you said, I think is a very important one and already within the government at least we have our own system you know which is run by the NIC which is secure and we have, you know, and we have what you know sort of in some sense this, you know the security wall the firewalls enough in place so that's but yes if we could develop our own you know gmail after all gmail was developed by an indian but you know then we sold it off but you know nonetheless that's that remains but the third part is that we are such an innovative entrepreneurial society that if there is you know, something being taken over, OYO, OYO is, coming, is being born, there is a TCS, there is a Wipro, there is an Infosys which is now becoming much more, you know, shifting from wage arbitrage to system integrator. There are new people which are arriving on the scene and so on. So I am not terribly concerned with, I was more concerned with us becoming a digitally divided society. Mm. No, that's the other part of it. So, that we may have we may have a digital haves and have nots. Ah, but that's, that's where this government <coughs> has done taken a lot. huge yes. care. Yes. We are going to be connecting all our two hundred and fifty thousand gram panchayats with optical fiber by, by the end of next year. That Excellent. Is, already hundred and ten thousand have been connected. We are laying uh, one point seven five lakh kilometers of uh, optical fiber in this country. So every village in some, you know, would be connected in the next five years or so, so that the digital divide will, will not be allowed to take place and every child in this country will have access to the internet and our internet intensity is improving amazingly and we are already, by the way, the largest data consumer in the world mm. because of the disruptive technology introduced by one of the telecom players and it has brought the prices down sure. significantly sure. and our, even our per capita data consumption is increasing. So, you know, uh, uh, trust you me that once we get this, uh, you know, the Bharat net thing going, you know, completely free, and we've got what, 3 lakh uh, CEC, you know, the, the cyber, um, service centers, you know, the, the sort of computer service centers where all the, you know, services are being provided in village, you will see that we would have uh, beaten 
you know, any, any notion yes. of being a digital colony. Of so I'm looking forward to this, the innovation labs, tinkering labs, uh, creating the next, you know, Mark Zuckerberg type people from here. Yes, yes, because, uh, you know, if you take something like Uber, yes. which is a huge, so many tens of billions of dollars market cap, uh, it's a very interesting idea, but a very simple idea. Yes. Now, now that Uber did it, so we have Ola and others replicating it. But, you know, being the first and innovating puts you on the world stage on a whole different level. There's no reason Indians can't be doing this. In fact, the same Indians with the same brains, when they go overseas, they're very successful. So, we, we also, we, therefore, we need some sort of an atmosphere, courage, yes. confidence. And maybe the IITs and engineering colleges need to have incubation labs. Yes. They should not just take the graduate and get him a job to be a tech engineer working, outsourcing something. But also, they should encourage like Stanford and all these places, encourage them to become entrepreneurs. No, no, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, all our IITs, by the way, now have incubation centers. And the Atal incubation centers, of which there will be 50 by the end of March, are all going to be connected with the IITs. Very good. Some of them are located there in, in, in some cases. And, you know, and, and this is it, actually. You're, we, will, uh, we are in the business of, of promoting entrepreneurship in this country. Because, because India is the land of entrepreneurs. That's, that's our future. That's our, and this is where the Planning Commission was just the complete antidote of that. Yes. But Niti Aayog is going to be doing it. And Niti Aayog is already also doing, by the way, uh, to put in place what we call a SBIR, the Small Business Innovation Research Program, in six ministries. By the time the next budget is announced, you will have six ministries, ministries putting aside a substantial corpus for encouraging innovation in small businesses. Very good. You know, because they are the people who are not just starting, they're already successful, but they need to scale up. They have a good idea, but they don't know. So, you know, so rather than just start up, we want to have stand up yes. and get there. So that is what the SBIR program Excellent. would be. So that's the third one that we're doing. And, and also, we are going to be connecting, converging the science and public sector science and technology systems, you know, with the private sector. Because that is also where the synergies can develop. And if I may just take one minute, with, you know what the, and this is, um, I hope, I hope Niti Ayu would come. You know, one of the biggest things to be done in our country is to create the trust between different stakeholders. Mm. And that's what's been missing so far. Mm. You know, the trust between the industry and the government and the academia and the civil society organization, so that we can, we, you know, so that we for once can say that all of us are working on the same page for the same goal. Very good. Once that happens, that synergy will be, and that energy, because you know, you, you mentioned that when Indians go abroad, yes. they do work, but, but because, see, that's what's been lacking. Right. What's been lacking is the confidence that what I do will be backed up by some other person. Right, right. I think we can do that in Ethiopia. And good role models. We'll have, we'll have and successful. This is what the Prime Minister's big you know, objective is. Excellent. Uh, to be able to get everybody on the same page and to pull together.